Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Battle Mode and I'm about to play a multiplayer game of Mega Mech with a friend of mine called Coffee. Uh, so you can see here that we've actually set this game up and uh, Coffee's already jumped into the game and we've both picked picked our mechs. We decided to go with the 500 battle value for this game and just stick to four mechs. We're not playing with any of the combined arm stuff, it's just four mechs versus four mechs. And yeah, this is a this guy I've been playing with for a little while now. We've um we we've kind of we try to get a game in every week if we can. So we've both been kind of learning things together. And yeah, this, he's really really cool. Uh, I think what we're gonna do rather than having us both on mic is I'm we're just gonna I'm just gonna play against him and then um, I'll do a debriefing afterwards. Uh, I don't think he's really up that up for having his having his voice on the camera at the moment. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, this should be really good fun. These games are always really really. They're always really interesting. And yeah, first I'm going to go through the map. So we just, uh, we, we randomly, gener oh, so we picked a map from the, uh, from some of the ones that come built in with Mega Mech now. Uh, Mega Mech's got loads and loads of maps that people have submitted. I think that's what it is. Uh, uh, lots of them will be actually the official tile sets. But here we've got the, these ones are, I, I, I expect they're ones that have been added by the community. Well, anyway, I just picked this one here. And then for my mechs uh actually coffee picked his first and he's gone with two kintaros and it's this uh, ct018 model now i don't know if this is the stock um uh, this guy likes to use he's kind of like me like he kind of likes the sort of stock stuff generally speaking although he will occasionally play variants but uh so this this i can't remember if this is the main variant or not but uh this has an lrm5 pack get this tooltip back up uh, two medium lasers and three SRM sixes, uh, 176 armor. So this thing's uh, it's movement five as well. So it's medium mech. It, if it gets up close, it's going to do a hell of a lot of damage because three SRM sixes is really really scary. Um, and yeah, so that, that that's something to be aware of. He's also got the poor man's atlas, the Orion, and the Orion comes with the AC10, LRM15. So it's got some long range firepower too, uh, and then it's got two medium lasers and SRM4. Um, for when it gets into close range heavily armored uh the orion's a really really good mech it's i mean you pay for it but it's it's a heavy mech it's kind of bordering on an assault class mech it's you know it's a it's a classic mech and you the 1k is a classic variant as well so yeah um he's actually i think i played this against him yeah i think i played the orion against him the last game that we played and uh he was obviously impressed he's also taken a trebuchet but 5J, uh, that's not a standard variant, I don't think. Or is it? No, this one's got an LRM 15 pack and three medium lasers. I don't think the 5J. Let me just have a look at this, actually. Bear with me, folks. Normally what I do is... Oh, it, it might be. Okay, this is annoying me now. I really want to look at this. <laughs> I'm just going to go to Sana. So... I don't know if I've showed you this before, but this is this is Sana.net, and this is the this is your Bible, right? When it comes to to BattleTech, if you're into BattleTech, right, you're going to know this site. Uh, so let's put in Trebuchet. It's the five N. I thought so. So so um, I've showed you this before, I think. But like we can always look at the weapon loadout here. So yeah, the standard Trebuchet has got two LRM fifteen packs and three medium lasers. So this guy is this is this five J model. It looks like an older model. It's got one LRM pack 15 and three medium lasers. Uh, what's different about this one then? Just trying to figure out. Oh, it's got more armor. Oh, it's got a jump pack as well. Oh, that's interesting. It's a really interesting little model, that one. So anyway, so that's Coffee's loadout. And uh, he's just gone with the standard pilot pilots. He went, um, Coffee went through a phase of like putting loads of his battle value into um, increasing gunnery and piloting skill. Um, particularly one game where we played where he had an atlas and he basically had a, a really really elite pilot in an atlas and i just kind of took it down because i was able to to kind of keep out of his range and to surround it so um i think he's kind of he's gone back to using you know more standard pilots like i tend to use uh, the reason why i do this by the way it's not because i've got any aversion to having better pilots um it's purely because while i'm learning the game and i still consider myself to be learning battletech I'm really interested to seeing how the mechs do so i don't tend to play i don't int unless unless there's extra battle value i've got to make up um i don't tend to increase piloting or gunnery unless i absolutely have to and i rarely rarely drop it i really don't like doing that okay so what have i gone with 
The core of my group is an Atlas. I, I've not played an Atlas yet, again, in multiplayer, so I really wanted to play one. And after seeing how Coffee handled his, I was like, this is going to be an interesting challenge. Uh, the Atlas is slow, uh, but it's got a horrendous amount of armor. It's just really, really hard to kill. Uh, you, you, you really have to focus on it to take it down. And you've got to focus on it in a sustained way as well. Um, so yeah, I, I thought I'd go with an Atlas. I thought it'd be an interesting centerpiece to my group. It's just a classic mech. Really very, very powerful. Um, it's it's not an auto win as you know like i say I, I managed to actually beat coffee when he took his although um he I, I, I think he underplayed it in a sense at some point when we when we both get on we can have a chat about that we can discuss that game because it was actually quite interesting uh, he did quite well but um yeah he he, had, he didn't quite win the day and partly because i think he over relied on the atlas and i think um, the atlas is definitely scary but he, if you keep well out of range of it and you've got plenty of weapons that can go in and shoot it from long range then yeah it struggles eventually you will take it down and um, with battletech being battletech and there's you know a heavy reliance on random rolls and critical hits you can get a lucky critical on an atlas you know if you shoot it with a ppc hit it in the head game over you know so okay uh, we're supporting with a jenna uh, stock model jr7d uh, you'll notice that i've gone for a kind of sword of light style build i've gone for the sword of light colors which is the draconis combine kind of elite elite forces unit um, they they just have a kind of plain red, you know, kind of pillar box red paint scheme, which is actually what I'm painting up some of my miniatures in at the moment. I just really like the color scheme. It's just really simple, and it looks very very striking. Um, the Jenna is going to be my recon mech. Uh, it's also really really hard hitting. It's probably my favorite light mech. It's it's got four medium lasers and an SRM four pack. It's I mean it's armored better than a lot of medium mechs really. Uh, the only thing about it is it's it's squishy it's basically like a locust in any every other respect except that it's also got a jump pack so it's quite big for a for a light 35 tons and the battle value is really high for a light mech so you pay for you pay for this thing but it performs i, I always have this thing's usually in a bit of a state at the end of my games but i play the jenna every time pretty much no, not every time but i i often use the jenna i really like it uh, backing up the atlas as a bodyguard mech i've got a hunchback 4g Usually I play with the 4P model. The 4P model is the ridiculous one with eight uh, medium lasers, which so it's got incredible redundancy. Um, but this is more of a, a House Karita Dr Draconis Combine kind of classic mech, the the classic HBK 4G with the Auto Cannon 20. Uh, it's got two medium lasers and a small laser so for when it gets, you know, for, for as it's closing in. But the really what you're watching for is that AC 20. Um, it needs to get really really close. Uh, this thing backing up the Atlas is going to be this is going to be a difficult team to beat, I think, and it depends on how Coffee plays, and you know to do with the terrain. Really, he's going to be wanting to do as much damage as he can as he comes in. Um, he has got LRMs and he's got this AC10 once he gets into kind of medium range, but um, yeah, I'm I've got some advantage I think when we get close, especially with you know if I can hit with the Hunchback, that's going to be nice. Um, you, you're always watching those dice when the when you know you're watching the dice rolls when the ac20 starts firing and the same with the atlas with the ac20 here i should have checked out the ac uh, sorry the the as7d's weapon loadout too auto cannon 20 for close range it's got an lrm 20 pack for long range and then it's got two medium lasers forward facing and then two medium lasers rear facing and an srm6 so it's kind of hard to get behind uh, the atlas has got horrendous armor by the way but um its rear armor as always is pretty weak um, it's got better rear armor than pretty much anything else on the game in the game it's actually got two pips in its center rear armor but um yeah it still doesn't want to be hit from behind i mean those kintaras will make mince meat out of it if they get behind it and get and start shooting those srm sixes into rear armor um okay and then we've uh, finally to polish it off we've got the dragon and coffee hates this thing <laughs> so i've been taking this as a i, I kind of take it to sort of troll him a little bit i don't know why the, the what's nice about the dragon is it just before it punches above its weight and i don't know why but there's a couple of things about the dragon one it's got good armor for a medium mech it's got reasonable armor second it's reasonably fast it moves five and it runs at eight so um it's quite quick and it can it can pick up a lot of you know modifiers to its defense when it's moving um so that's it's quite fast 
The other thing is that it's got an interesting weapon loadout. Um, it's got the AC5, so it's got it quite long range and on the LRM10 as well. So it's reasonably good at medium and long range. Uh, the, the LRM10's kind of the minimum LRM that I like to use. I think the LRM5 is just a little bit too weak. So you'll see these Kintaros have got two LRM5s. They're okay, but they're, they're going to be sort of averaging about, you know, two, three damage you know, when they hit, um, which is not a whole lot, whereas the LRM10 is going to be close to five, which is a little bit more respectable. Um, they also it, uh, the dragon also has one medium laser up front and one medium laser rear facing. I'd really prefer it if the medium lasers were both forward facing. I think that would make the dragon much more. It'd give it a lot more biting close range and medium range. However, it's this is not really how you use the dragon. The dragon also has a really nice quirk called narrow low profile. This is it's a similar one that the uh, the jet, uh, the locust also has, and any any shot that shoots into it with a what would i say if you let, let's say you need tens to hit and you roll a 10 then you'll actually only do half damage so it's a really powerful thing and this kicks in all the time um the, the like it just seems to protect the dragon it keeps it alive so coffee hates this thing and he and he, he puts an, a lot of firepower on it when he probably shouldn't <laughs> so i think this time he's got he's really got like two targets he's wanting me, he needs to be going for really in It'd be nice to take the Jenner out, but it, uh, obviously the Atlas is the main threat and the Hunchback is going to be really dangerous too. So I think I think he's probably learned his lesson not to put too much firepower into the Dragon, particularly considering how survivable it is. But we'll see. All right, folks, we're going to start because coffee's waiting for me. So let's get on the game. So I'm just going to have a look what we got here. So we're going in the initiative and I won the initiative. I've actually got an initiative modifier here from the Atlas because the Atlas has got a uh, command mech quirk. So let's go. Um, you'll notice that my battle value is slightly higher than Coffee's. Uh, he's just saying hello. Look, let's just... Greetings. <laughs> when I get a minute, I'll reply to him. I also might need to set up the uh, some of the other parts of my screen. Here we go. Okay. Um, so let's just have a look at this going on here. I'm starting in the north, I think. I'm just waiting for Coffee to set up. He's uh, He lost the initiative, so I get set up first. Now, I really want more people to play this game. I think that... I'd, I Because I've been sick, I've, I've really want... Uh, I've really not been able to play much for the channel, and I've mostly been relying on videos that have been coming out that, I've been, that are pre-recorded. But Mega Mech is something that I want to play more of. I think it's a really, really good game. I... I I find most tactics games get boring really fast, whereas this I don't ever get bored of. It's just really good. Okay, so he's placed one of the Kintaros here on this left on this left side. Now, we're going to be fighting over this mountain. Uh, we're going to try and race for the high ground. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to... I want to try to move the Atlas up relatively slowly so I can get the LRM packs off as much as possible. Um, which means... Think about this. I don't want him to get behind the mountain uh, too early. Then we've got these trees on this side. I could move the atlas up here, you see, like a, in a direct line. But then he's going to be shooting up. You know, he's uh, going to have to go through these trees as well. Yeah, I'm going to put the atlas here, I think. Deploy. Okay, so it's Coffee's turn next. I'm just going to send him a message, say... Uh, Hello. Good luck, have fun, which is the, uh, which is something that I like to say to people. Okay. <laughs> I apologize if I do cough from time to time. I'm still shaking off the last of this bout of, of uh, illness that I've got. It's just about gone. I'm back at work now. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's been like a month. Lasted a month this time. Okay, so we've got... Uh, he's put the other Kintaro on this flank. Interesting. Okay. I want. I, what I want to do with these, with these guys is I want to dance around them. I, I reckon that if I can try to distract one of these with the dragon and then go for, it, go for the rest and just focus fire something down early, then I've got a, I've got a chance, a good chance. Um, and I, I find that the dragon's really, really good at distraction. Um, I don't want to start him. I think I'm just going to put it here. Mind you. What could we do? 
I think what, what I want to do is actually with the dragon, if I if I have the Atlas and the Hunchback and the Jenna moving into the center, then I'm going to get the dragon kind of dancing around on one of the flanks. So let's get the dragon up here, I think. Now, just for the sake of coffee sanity, I'm going to try to make my moves relatively quickly, folks. But um, yeah, as always, I'm going to try and explain what I'm doing. Scroll this map out a little bit. Yeah, this is nice. He's actually... Okay, so he's put the Orion in the center here. Okay. Yeah, the Orion, the Orion along with these Kintaros is quite a scary threat. So I've got to kind of consider how that I'm going to try and uh, win this one. Now, the Orion's not particularly quick. In the past, the way that I've beaten this guy is usually by outmaneuvering him. Um, I tend to kind of make him make a mistake. So he leaves one of his units kind of out in the open somewhere. So And then I'll turn at the last minute and focus fire on one of them and take one of them down. This is what, which is kind of the, plan, the sort of rough plan that I've been doing. Let's get the, um, I want the Hunchback got being a body, acting as bodyguard to the Atlas, so I'm going to get him in the centre here. Um, I think that he's, his plan is probably going to be similar to mine, try and isolate something and kill it. The, uh, he's got a relatively slow moving, well not slow, but yeah, the Kintaro is a five, a five, yeah, so... Yeah, the Kataris are actually quite quick. They're actually as quick as the dragon. Now, the dragon's a heavy mech. Um, but it's... I mean, the Kintaris have actually got better... You know, kind of more dangerous armament, I'd say. Those three SR SRM-6 and two medium lasers forward-facing is really, really strong. Um, this is one of the reasons why pe some people think the, the dragon's kind of undergunned. Uh, I don't agree. I think the dragon... I don't think the dragon is really supposed to be used in the way that, um, you know, perhaps some people are using it. Okay, so I run the initiative. I do get this modifier for the Atlas here, so I was lucky here. So let's see what happens. Now, yeah, I have actually got slightly more battle value. I um I couldn't quite get anything that was above a book sort of between five hundred sorry five thousand twenty six and something like four thousand nine hundred and thirty. And um Coffee was like, No, 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 don't worry, you can I don't mind if you go over a little bit. And I was like, Are you sure? Um I mean normally if we're playing combined arms, I'd just make it up with a tank or, you know, something like that. But he was like, no, no, I don't mind. It's, it's absolutely fine. I don't mind if you go over. So, Coffee's going to be making his first move here. Um, he lost the initiative, so he's going to move. Looks like he's got one Kantaro down on this flank here. Um, I, I want to move up towards the centre. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to split off. I'm either going to go to the left flank or I'm going to go to the right flank. Keep the uh, And I'm going to keep the Atlas relatively far back i think at the start so i think my what i like to do is i want to engage make good use of the range try and get off these lrm 20 this lrm 20 pack as much as possible dance around with the dragon just try and take uh, try and avoid any damage as much as possible uh, maybe keep you know my my troops behind this this mount you know these these hills here it's moved the orion directly forward right so what i'm going to do in response to that are we going to be able to see him with anything? I wonder. It's hard to say. Quite far away, so it's kind of difficult to see stuff. Okay, we can see... The dragon here can see this Orion. Now, that gives me the option of firing... Let's see how far the Atlas is away from this Orion. Ah, oh, it's 22, look. So, um, we, do, we are going to have to move. Maybe if I move forwards... Now, I don't want this intervening woods either ideally but i don't want to run either um I, I what i want to do here i think is try and get the atlas in a position where we can get some firepower off i think there's going to be intervening woods if i shoot if i try and get this orion as we go anyway but yeah i'm going to face i'm going to move this way let's see if we can like, so i like trying to fake people out in this so I think if I if I make a move going this way and he continues just moving straight forward, then I might just keep going this way and go, you know, go on to one flank. What I'll say about the Atlas is it's kind of slow moving. So once it's in a position, 
you you've got to be careful because you can get you, you can get surrounded at that point the atlas really just needs to run in okay so you just got to run straight in make use of that armor and just target something down okay he's bringing the trebuchet up to guard the uh you know to guard that to guard the orion i wonder what we can do with the jenna here okay so getting an 11 and maybe we move this guy up this way uh, we've got some I, i'm thinking that the kintaro here is probably going to struggle to target this jenna okay we've got intervening light woods I, i'm not worried about that even even the jenna can probably survive a hit from an lrm5 so unless he gets an unlucky shot so he's just got the two kintaro to move down on these flanks now i've not used these ones myself actually now this is a this would actually be quite a thematic thing for my uh, sword of light kind of group um because i think that kintaro is a What's Kintaro? Uh, kin is gold, I think, in Japanese. Kin and Gin is kind of gold. Kintaro, I, th I think Kintaro might be one of those old legends. Might be a legendary character, if I remember right. Or may maybe I'm thinking of Mamataro. Mamataro is the peach boy. <laughs> I can't remember who Kintaro is now. Kintaro might be, yeah, it might just be a, a Japanese name, but Kin it definitely means gold, if I remember right. If I remember my Japanese. So, uh, yeah. And Taro is kind of like a common sort of boy's name ending. So like Shintaro, for example. I had a friend when I was growing up called Shintaro. So um, yeah, interesting. Okay, so yeah, he's moving it right. This is good, right? Um, when I when I've played this guy before, he's he's kind of been a little bit a uh, bit too kind of cautious i guess and doesn't always get his troops into range the other the other mistake that he was making was he was keeping his stuff too close together so i was able to kind of get around him he's really starting to learn to position well now this is really good because it's making the game really right like, kind of interesting because he's really he zones me out <laughs> and he did this in the last game that we played as well and i was like oh wow this guy's got really got loads better because he's really zone, learning to zone me out now okay the orion's got an lrm 15 um i've got to be a little bit careful that's good 20 I don't want to take an LRM-15 to a dragon. However, I still want to get the dragon being able to see. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to move him around this way. Let's just see if we're going to be able to see that Orion there. Yeah, we can see him. So let's do that. I'm just going to move this guy around this way. We're going to try and make use of all the uh, long-range weaponry that we've got before we close in. As well... You know, and then close in. What I will say about the Kintaro is if these things get in, like if two of those kind of attack the Atlas together, yeah, that that's going to hurt. They can put the Atlas on the ground. You know, if we, we're unlucky, they could, you know, two SRM6s and two medium lasers. So that's going to be like six SRM6s and four medium lasers. I, I, would, I don't think an Atlas is going to like that. That's a lot, even for an Atlas to deal with, I've got to say. So let's get the hunchback. Hunchback kind of wants to get in as qu quick, relatively quickly as possible. I'd say um, he's going to play guard. He's going to play bodyguard. I think maybe I'll move here. I want to give him the impression at least that I'm going around this way. Now we do ha we will have the option of turning and kind of um, then going back towards the center. I want to see where he goes. Okay, so it's firing turn. Let's see what Coffee's doing. So, as always, folks, if you're bothered by the lack of background music, I encourage you to pick your favorite background music and play it in the background yourself. One of the reasons why I haven't put any music on Mega Mech so far is because I can't find anything suitable that's not kind of, you know, that's not going to get my video demonetized. But then also that, you know, that sounds good as well and most of the generic stuff just, i just don't like uh, you've heard it a thousand times before so um yeah please feel free to pl play your own background music it's what i tend to do when i'm watching stuff anyway so at some point i will get off my bottom and um, actually produce some music for this but i haven't really i'm actually working on music at the moment but it's nothing to do with battletech okay dragon now the dragon i think is going to spot for the atlas now i don't think the lrm 10's in range no so we're out of range with the LRM-10. So this guy is literally just going to spot. So let's get, click on the uh, Orion here. Spot. Do you want to spot for indirect fire? Yes. And done. 
then uh, I'm going to see if we can we can pop off a few shots with the with the LRM20 at indirect. Now, um, bearing in mind that Coffee might also be able to see me. Okay, so the Orion might be able to hit me. Yeah, he's within range as well. Can't get direct fire there, but if the uh, Kintaro can see me. Let's get the Atlas. I'm going to turn to face the front. I'm going to select this. Go to the LRM20 and click on mode. Okay, so we're on indirect fire. Uh, 13's to hit, so there's kind of no point. Um, so we can't do that. He, he, we've we've all moved too far. The modifiers are just stacking up. Uh, if I'd have stayed still, then we could have done that. I don't want to. I don't like staying still in this game. It's deadly. <laughs> um, the Atlas could probably do it. Okay, the Atlas. I don't think we've got anything else that's got long range fire. So let's just click down here. There's not much we do. It's gonna be a quick first round. This one. Yeah, he was walking forward with the Orion. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if he was hoping to get an LRM shot off. Either that or he's just not that keen to get engaged yet. I, I, if I was going to use his, his this lance that he's got against what I've brought, I think I'd probably be trying to rush at him and trying to take something down quick. He He doesn't have quite the same... Long range firepower that I do, I don't think. Mind you, he does have these LRM fives. I don't really rate the LRM five though. Um, I think it's it's a nice it's nice to have, but it's not you know a main weapon system so to speak. Just uh, skip on with the hunchback. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm thinking that um, coffee might have learned what, that. My what I like to do is kind of like go for one thing. So, um, this would be a nice trick. Bring this Kintaro on this side. You know, I kind of zo zone in on it, and then he kind of moves in this way, and then you know brings the rest of his group to bear. Uh, that would be that would be a good. That would be a nice tactic, and that's the kind of thing that I I like to do. I you do that with the dragon. I think next turn I'm going to move the dragon up onto this hill, and then just pop some shots off. Can't, we can't hit with anything here, so we're well out of range. Let's click on done. Okay, no firing. Let's go straight into the next round. Uh, I've won the initiative again, so I was lucky there. The coffee gets to move first again. And obviously in a game where, you know, you've got the same, an equal number of troops, or an equal number of forces, and you know you take it in turns with the initiative obviously you want to be you want to be moving last so when you lose the initiative the, the uh when you lose the initiative you move first essentially so it gives the the player the ability to kind of react to your movements and initiative is so so important in battle tech it's really really important so it's and it's kind of like one of the most debated debated rules as well in the game in the sense of uh there are loads of variant rules with with regards to initiative because it's kind of easy to cheese the initiative rules okay so he's moved his trebuchet back which is interesting i wonder why he did that what's its range 17 trebuchet's got lrm 15 is it right yeah it's interesting that he only took one lrm 15 on that thing and he went for the um jump jet instead I'm not sure if he's done that just because it's a thematic, something, something thematic he wanted to go for, or, or what. I'm really not sure. Now with my Jenna, I really don't want to get. I, I've learned with the Jenna, it, if you blow on it, it dies. <laughs> so I don't want to get even remotely within range until I'm ready to. Uh, I'm ready to kind of like move behind with something. Let's move the dragon first. be able to see here yes so let's 
moved the dragon behind here, so we're actually... But I might just move it slowly. Now, this is dangerous. Um, however, I do want to... Um, I don't want to get the modifier, the too many modifiers for the spotting check. So this is kind of dangerous to do stuff like this. I um I generally try to move at full speed all the time if I can, once I'm in engagement range. However, uh, I think that with the range being what it is, I don't think he's going to be able to get within 14 hexes to get the medium range. I have moved, so I will get movement modifier of 1. Um, and I'm also behind this hill, so I am protected. Plus, we've got the, the we've got the dragon's quirk of the, the low narrow profile, which also protects him too. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm quite serious that I want to try and get some indirect shots off at him. Um, if I can, if I can hit anything, I don't. It doesn't really matter what I can shoot. Can we see that trebuchet? No, we can't see the trebuchet. Um, let's see. We once he's moved the Orion, we might find that we can't see him anymore. For example, if he moves like up here, then I'm pretty sure I won't be able to see him. Oops. Yeah, we could still see it there if he moves here. I see that's probably what I would do with the Orion. I'd probably move it up to this hill and then start shooting with that LRM pack. The coffee's just having to think about it. Okay, so yeah, he, he he actually moved onto that hill. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so he's probably going to try and shoot the dragon. You can also see the Jenna here as well. Um, I don't like that. I don't want. I I, I need to keep that Jenna moving. Now this might be a, a good point for the Jenna to turn. The thing about turning is you're gonna you're gonna when you turn around, you are going to reduce the amount of movement modifier. So we're going to get a plus three modifier to hit here. If we were to move straight forwards, look, we're going to get a plus four. So yeah, you you kind of got to be a little bit careful. No, I'm not going to move there. That's way too close to that Orion for my liking. So get the uh, Jenna moving this way. I'm just going to kind of move back down this way now. Um, we might, we if we're lucky, I might be able to get him into overcommitting the Orion. In which case we can target it down. Now, that's not that easy to do with something that's got two hundred thirty-one armor. It's really uh, the the Orion's really really well armored, um, but the uh, I have got enough firepower if I can get close to it. Uh, we've just got to be careful of being flanked by you know by anything coming around the sides. I'll have to make that call as you know as the opportunity arises. So I think part of the tactics in you know in fighting lance on lance battle tech at least that i've played so far is really waiting for somebody to make make a move that you can exploit right so not you know not necessarily make a mistake but keep an eye out for where they are committing in a certain way to the point that it's going to be difficult for them to react to what you're doing so when i was talking about for example let's say we moved up the atlas this way up, up kind of here um if he's going to move if he's going to turn around he's only got three moves right so turning is going to take most of his movement so that's an example of where, you know, you, some, you can kind of zone someone out because, okay, the Atlas is running in this direction, uh, but he's got to basically turn. And you can exploit the fact that he's going to be using quite a lot of his movement value just to turn in order to be able to kind of not get surrounded or not get zoned out. So that's an opportunity that you're kind of looking for. Okay, the, he's got Kintaro acting as bodyguard now on this Orion. That's interesting. What I'm going to do here is, can we see... Okay, the Orion and the Atlas can see one another now. That's interesting. So we don't have to actually be spotting. Um, I think in that case, let's move the hunch back first. I'm going to get hunchy kind of up this direction. I don't, again, the hunchback's another one that kind of takes a little while to turn. You've got to a little bit, be a little bit careful. Let's just measure... Yeah, the, the Orion can see the Hunchback from there. I don't want the Hunchback to take too many shots either. Uh, so maybe I'll bring him up to behind these woods here. Now, now what that leaves me is with the... Once I've got... Once he's moved his last unit, I can pick a target for the Atlas. Now, we don't have to spot with the Dragon. We can actually get a direct fire shot in, um, depending on where I move the Atlas to. So what I could potentially do is move behind these trees. 
and then shoot at the atlas from behind the trees um and then yeah the, I, I mean it depends where we move if we move here we're going to go through two hexes and we probably can't shoot him actually i think you can go through two two elevations yeah we've uh, we'd lose two we'd lose we'd there'd be a minus two hit modifier to go through two light woods um i think if you went through i think it's three way is where you can't so if you if uh, what i'm trying to say is let's say if we we were looking through the let's, let's say the hunchback was shooting here look not here it would be so he's shooting there that would be line of sight blocked by woods because you've got a medium wood and a heavy wood and the heavy wood blocks two points and the medium blocks uh, sorry the light blocks one okay right okay Kintaro stayed up that way I wonder if the atlas could be able to shoot the Orion from here yeah okay so we're going to be a minus one because of the intervening light woods um or we could go for indirect okay there's going to be no in there's going to be no cover there i think i'd rather be in the cover mind you the atlas is probably I, the atlas is going to be able to take damage more than the orion actually so let's just move it let's walk him up this way and um, let's get some shots off and see what happens um now i might be able to hit the i might even be able to hit the kintaro from here yep but it's 21 distance which is long range this is 18 um so yeah still gonna be long range uh it's coffee's turn to fire so i'm not sure why we've got this targeting thing i think it's because i clicked on the i clicked on the atlas Oh, tre I wonder if the trebuchet is in range. Yeah, the trebuchet could actually fire at this Jenna. Hopefully, um, the trebuchet ran, which means he's going to get a minus two penalty. The Jenna ran quite a fair way. So I'm hoping he's not going to be able to use that. Okay, the Kintaro is, looks like he's shooting LRMs at the Atlas. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. That's just going to bounce off me. Uh, so let's get the Atlas shooting the LRM-20. Now we've got nines to hit on the on the Kintaro because the Kintaro didn't move. Let's fire at the Kintaro. We've got nines to hit. Look. Um, alternatively, we could have the dragon spotting for indirect on one of them. But these guys have moved. Look, I think we we're actually better off going for that Kintaro. I'd say I I like the odds of nines to hit better than better than ten, uh, better than tens. And I'm going to teach him to, to, that standing still is a bad idea. So we're going to go fire. And yeah, we're going to, not going to be in range of anything else. Done. So the uh, the Atlas and the Kintaro are going to exchange fire. Oh, if I get a lucky hit here and do some damage to this, I'd be really, really pleased. Okay. Um, it looks like he's passed on one of his units. Get how you tell which. I'm not sure which one it would have been. Um, okay. Dragon, I think, is probably out of range. Yeah, just just out of range of that um AC5. The LRM10 we can hit with though. Tends to hit, so let's uh let's go for the Orion. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now if he sh if he actually returned fire at the dragon with the uh, with the LRMs. I'm not too worried about this because this is uh, in this position. He's quite well defended, as I explained before. Yeah, he is firing back. Look, now if you actually um, hover over this arrow, there we go. Look, if you actually move down and hover over the arrow, uh, yeah. So he's he needs 11s to hit with his LRM 15. Okay, hunchback is not in range. I know that for a fact. So we're just going to go to done. Oops. Yeah done facing the way i want him to face not spotting for anything uh so we've just got the genitor move next oh 
I wonder if it's going to be the Kintaro firing at the dragon. So the, the the dragon, right, is is always worth me bringing. Yeah, I knew he'd do that. The dragon's always worth me bringing against Coffee because Coffee seems to he likes to shoot at this thing, um, because it, it, he 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 got he was just like ah oh, that damn thing it keeps surviving like how how is it so like how is it that I just fire everything at it and it just seems to survive? I think part of it is luck. In all honesty, uh, I don't think I don't think dragon's particularly good. Okay, so let's have a look at the firing round. Um, Kintaro missed. The Atlas missed. That was a shame. And um, we hit with the dragon though. And we got four missiles hit on the Orion. So we just stripped some armor off its left leg. And the Orion and the Kintaro both missed at the dragon. Okay. So this game is all about stacking up these modifiers. You want to be stacking up the attack penalties. You know, moving, staying in cover. Just keeping your mechs out of the way. While maximizing your own modifiers in order to be able to try and get some shots in. The, the long range game is an interesting one. I really, really like to play at this kind of range. Like I think, I think that even though you don't hit so much, the, the game is really, really tactical, even at, even at this kind of range. And there's, you'll, you'll find that, at least with me, and I, you know, I don't want to talk like I'm an expert because I'm not. I've not been playing this that long, but I played quite a lot. And I think that when you're, when you're playing at long range, there's a really interesting dance that kind of goes around where you're, you're jostling per, 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 uh, position. You're trying to encourage... The player to move in a certain way so that you can get a you know so you can exploit certain moves that they make or mistakes but also just to kind of stack those modifiers so you can get as many as many long range shots in as possible and just try and do some damage before you close um i i do think that we are relatively well matched i think when it comes to close range providing that um he, if he brings everything down to bear you know on the atlas for example and I don't have much to counter it. I could be in big trouble. The Atlas really is the the centerpiece of this game, so I I cannot let him close me down. I, I think that I would even be better off just staying at long range for a bit and just seeing if I can kind of exploit that. Okay, um, I forgot to see who won in initiative. I believe it was Coff. I think it was me again. So uh, Coffee's move. He's run forwards with the trebuchet here. What do we do with the dragon here? I think the dragon probably wants to kind of I think it'll be a plus one modifier get a plus two if we move in close I, d I, I don't want to move that close to him yet I also do I do want to keep the ability to be able to kind of see around this side so get him moved over here he's, he's, he's going to be kind of vulnerable to being shot here however he has got this hill guarding him so out of all the things that you can shoot at, I want him to shoot at the dragon. Because the dragon, I'm not that bothered about. It's not, you know, the weapons loadout on it isn't that heavy. If you can keep it alive, though, into the end game, I found this thing's quite effective. So, you know, an AC, an AC5 and a medium laser, it's not the strongest weapon. You know, they're not the strongest weapons up close, but it's also got two fists. So it can punch. Um, and it's also, you know... It seems to do quite well. It's, once you get into close range, it is a heavy mech. It's got decent armor. See how the armor compares. Actually, it's got, it hasn't got as good armor as the Kintaros. 91 internals. This has got 99. So it, they're roughly comparable. I think the Kintaros are slightly heavier armored. Um, they, they move at the same speed. It's interesting. These aren't that... These, these are a little bit like the Dragon. They're just better armored. Uh... Better armed, sorry. Okay, where's he gone? He's moved that guitar over onto that side. Okay. All right. Um, now, these can reposition relatively quick. I've got the option to try and chase this Kintaro down now. But I think it's a little bit early to make a, make a call like that. What we could do is we could have the Jenna moving back up this way. And then just see if I can get him to kind of bring... It would be cool if I could get him to bring like two or three of his units over this way. And then keep one on this side. And then I can kind of switch gears and focus on that. So we're all about the mind games. It's all about the mind games at this part. Mind games and then relying on some lucky dice rolls. If we can get, get a few lucky shots in. You know, maybe we can get a critical hit with an LRM. Obviously, you can't plan for that to happen. That is just something nice if it does. But, you know, um, if you throw enough dice, 
you are eventually going to get some nice dice rolls. We actually hit last time. Was it the Kintaro? Oh no, it was the Orion, wasn't it? We stripped a little bit of armor off its left leg. Yeah, that thing's. These things are really good. They're um, for the battle value. They they perform really really well, and you know in the in in the law they kind of refer them to as the poor man's atlas. They they kind of have a similar sort of weapon loadout, just less of. Um, it's it's quite heavily armored for its for its weight class. Um, yeah, I like the I like the Orion. It's a really really good mech. Okay, he's bringing the Kintaro in a little bit closer. Okay. Now the Atlas can actually see the Orion here. In from there, yeah. I can. Would I be able to see that Kintaro? Yes. Although there is woods intervening. Now, um, again, kind of a bit cautious. Be a bit cautious about moving. Yeah, we need to move at least three to get plus one modifier to our defense. So I think I'm going to move the atlas up this way. <clears throat> now we can. Uh, at this point, it's still it's still not too dangerous for me to kind of turn and move this way, depending on how the battlefield shifts. I've got to say, right. <clears throat> Uh, this guy has really upped his game with regards to his positioning. Uh, I've, I found the first few games I played against him where he, he kind of he was still learning the ropes and was getting his head around it. Uh, I think he must have been, we've not been able to play for a couple of weeks, and I think he's probably really he's either practiced a bit or he's just kind of he's taken on board some of the stuff that he's learned from the few game the last few games because I think I think I've played three games now, or it might be four, and I think I've won all of them. He's yet to beat me, um, but. The uh, every single time he plays, he gets better, and this is really I love this. I love when I, it's really great fun, by the way, when you've got uh, an opponent in a game that you play with regularly, and you get to kind of watch each other develop, and you can learn from one another. It's just really good fun, and he's a really cool guy as well. Like, been really he's he's become you know quite a good mate, and we talk to each other quite a lot, um, and so it's really fun because you know you get to, you, like usually we're when we play, we play on voice chat, so we're just chatting to each other as we're playing. And uh, yeah, we we have a good laugh when we're playing as well, man. But he's uh, yeah, he's really really upped his game with regards to his positioning. I think maybe making him making himself a little bit exposed standing on these hills, but at least with regards to not allowing himself to be too far out, he's kind of uh, to not allow himself to kind of get left, you know, leaving units isolated. Um, I often do this with the dragon, by the way. I often like to move the dragon out on the wing. Okay, yeah, he's he is leaving this one here now. But that's okay, because that Kintaro is quite quick and can move back in. He's very much mimicking what I'm doing, look, if you, if you look at it in this way. Has turned his back on the uh, with that Orion, though. I'm not sure if I like that. Yeah, she... This way. Um, you like Hunchback likes to fight in this kind of terrain, you know, where he's kind of been able to to guard stuff. But at the same time, I also I was hoping that Hunchback was going to be acting as a more as a bodyguard, really. I don't want the Hunchback to go too far. However, I do like that plus two modifier. That said, I don't think he's going to be able to shoot me with the Atlas, uh, sorry, with the Orion here. The Trebuchet, however, might be able to hit him. Distance 9. Oh no, it's blocked by terrain for direct fire. Let's get the Hunchback just moving up here then, kind of slow. I'm going to have him move, walk, just walking up this way. Again, I'm always a bit reluctant just to walk. I think you want to be stacking as many um, hit penalty modifiers as you can. But in this case... Uh, the hunchback's also kind of slow, and I don't want him to to get left out of. You know, uh, I don't want him to get kind of out positioned. Now this dragon, it's quite easy for him to just kind of run back down this way or run back down this way. Battletech's an interesting game because I think often what you're wanting to do in these kind of games is is make sure. Oh, so uh, Kintaro is actually firing at the hunchback here. 
it's kind of interesting yeah so you want to take you often want to take high ground and you know take and control the battlefield so an atlas for example is classic position for him to be is he's going to be in the center um but i think it's good to be mobile and i think it's obvious to just head straight to the center and also you you can get surrounded a little bit more easily so i like to kind of come into the center from a direction if you follow me so as you can see i'm kind of moving in this way and i'm probably going to snake in towards the center but it depends on what he does with his troops next okay let's have a look at this dragon um i wonder what we can yeah we, we are in range 11 to hit the kintaro with the ac5 uh, lrm10 yeah, again, it's 11. So let's hit this Kintaro. So we're going to fire with the LRM10 and the AC5. We need 11s to hit. Odds aren't good, but, you know, let's do it. Um, okay, I can't see with the Atlas at this point. What we're going to do is we're going to get the Jenner into a position where we can... Can the Jenner do that? We are in firing phase, after all. Okay, can't, the Jenner can't see that, but we might be able to see this Kintaro. Yep. Can the Atlas see the Kintaro? Yes, he can. So we can direct. We can actually direct fire with the Atlas here at the Kintaro. Uh, Coffee's still making his move here. Yeah, Kintaro is firing at the Hunchback. LRM five needs an eleven, and he's also shooting at us here with the uh, LRM five again. With the Kintaro needs elevens to hit. Yeah, I'm not too scared. I'm not too worried about that. Let's get the. Um, let's get this guy. Just spotting. Spot for indirect fire. Um, I don't think we're going to need it. But it's better than just kind of like, you know, moving your turn on. I don't think the spotting has any effect on anything else. Uh, it, it will... If you're shooting with uh, with something you're spotting with, that will, that will reduce the spotting modifier. The uh, the Jenna can't do anything. Can't do much here either. I'm just going to spot for indirect here. I don't. I don't think we need to do it again. I don't think it has any negative effect. And then the only shots we're going to be taking, other than the dragon, is going to be with the Atlas, and I think it's going to be on the Kintaro. Let's see what he does with his uh, trebuchet here. I wonder if he's going to try and shoot the dragon. Okay. Uh, it looks like he passed. Okay, uh, LRM20 is what we want. 11s to hit the Kintaro. Um, yeah, we're not spotting anything else. Let's just fire that LRM20 off. We've got 11 shots. Always keep firing. Oh, okay. Uh, everything missed. So, yeah, uh, we, we were all kind of unlucky there. I mean, we were needing 11s to hit. So at this range... Yeah, you're you're kind of look, relying on lucky shots. <laughs> Coffee said, "Yikes!" <laughs> okay, uh, hit heat phase. Nothing to see there. Uh, Coffee's won the initiative this time, so I get to move first. Well, I have to move first. It's probably a better way of putting it. Okay. Um, what do I do? Do I move the dragon back in this way now? He could start moving in closer. Maybe I do. I could kind of move it up to here, get the plus three modifier. Then he can... Well, right, okay. I'm fairly sure that if I do this, what he's going to do is he's going to move these guys in this way. And then that will enable me to get in closer towards the Kintaro. Um, I, I don't think he's going to be able to resist this. And honestly, I don't really mind because the, drag, the dragon can then kind of run down this way, right? Or it can kind of run up here or, you know, behind this mountain. So this might be an, an interesting move to make because he, he does get distracted by the dragon. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I bring it. And I've told him loads. I'm like, you get triggered by this dragon, mate. And I know that, I know that, um, you know, you, I, I, every time I bring it, it makes more than its battle value in the fact that you just shoot at it. So I do wonder if I bring this in, he might try and pile everything into it. I don't want to lose it, of course. That would be, you know, bad. I mean, not catastrophically bad, but it would be a severe blow to my game. I think. But I'm going to try it anyway. I feel like with the movement modifier, 
we're going to get a plus three, uh, a negative three to hit. Plus we're behind this hill. Uh, plus certain things, like for example, Kintaro. Close that. Kintaro might be going through those woods there. Oh no, he's higher than the woods. If I remember right, the woods go up two levels. And he, he stands two levels. Yeah, that, I think that's about right. Yeah, the 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 specific rules for how height works is actually in the um is in the BattleTech rule tech rule book. So I'd have to actually have a look at that, but let's just see what he does there. I, if I can if I can get him into moving everything down here, that could be quite interesting because it will what it what it might do is if we can get him to move down here, we can kind of force him to engage at this level. Um or we can keep circling round. Now there's no time limit by the way in this game. I guess when you're playing tabletop battle tech there's going to be a time limit because you know you're kind of wanting to you wanting to finish your game before you've all got to go home, right? Whereas we can just save it whenever we want. So okay, he's moved the trebuchet up onto here. Trebuchet's probably after moving himself as well. I think the to, to hit modifier is going to be kind of low. And he's only got one LRM15 on that thing. Um, let's move the Jenna because the Jenna is something that I can reposition very, very fast if I need to. Again, I'm very reluctant to to get anywhere even close to engagement range with the Jenna until I'm ready. Um, get him moving down this way. I'll just keep him, keep him moving, keep him behind cover. I can turn him. I can turn him to face anything that might potentially be shooting at him. To see if I can get um, Coffee to waste some shots here. You know, against these kind of fast-moving guys. Ideally, if I can draw him down this way, uh, the Hunchback and the Atlas can start moving forwards, and we we might see what we can do about trying to isolate this Kintaro. Um, bearing in mind that this thing is fast, and he, you know, he can be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, w within one one movement turn of of quick movement, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's going to be like here. He could actually kind of like regroup. It's moving around this side now, look. See, I've I've got my fast units that can quickly position. Um, they can actually quickly, both of these, all of mine can kind of move up this way. Uh, this is what I think I'm going to do. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this atlas now. I'm going to actually start stomping up this way. Let's move quickly. I'm, I'm less bothered about the LRM hitting now as I am about getting into position. So um, let's see what he where he goes with this. It's all about the dance, and it's all about you know trying to exploit any positioning mistakes. And it's and as I was saying a few minutes ago, this 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 dance is really really much. It, it's really fun now because I think that you know his his posi his positioning is really he's really he's really dancing too, and I like it. Kind of try. He's he's keeping a little bit far back. I think if it was me, I'd be trying to get this this trebuchet into range and trying to shoot off with the RM15 a little bit more in the Orion. Uh, but we might have that coming now. You might find here. Look. Okay, I've got partial cover, but um, and I've moved quite fast, and he's moved as well. Um, he ran, so he's going to get a negative two penalty to hit. We moved. Oh, what's our penalty? Ours is going to be three. So yeah, I mean, he's going to be it's going to be like minus five to hit. I don't think he's going to have much hope with the Jenna. Right, Hunchy's going to get up this way, I think. Yeah, I think I'm just going to move straight forwards. Okay. Yeah, maybe I use. I'm gonna keep keeping cover. I've had enough really bad dice rolls now to realize that you really want to keep make use of all the cover that you can, because even like even like these guys are gonna. I reckon he's gonna unload on this dragon now because I know he hates it, um, and it's probably a good target for him in the position that he's in. And even in this situation, I really don't want to be taking any shots. It's just a bad move. Okay, we got a Kintaro, um, or we got the Orion. Now I'm I'm in range of everything at the moment, so apart from the rear laser, twelves to hit on that that 
Um, it's going to be tens to hit here. Oh, we can get a shot in on the trebuchet. Nines. Um, now that can this Orion, the Orion that we've already hit before. We're not going to hit the left leg from here probably. Um, maybe I'll go for the trebuchet since the trebuchet is probably going to be easier to hit. Yeah, and taking out his long range might be nice as well. Um, we could fire, I don't know, we're not going to hit with a medium laser set. Look, I'm done there. Now, do I want to spot before I do this? Let me just think about this. No, I don't, because the Atlas is running, and he, I don't think he's he's going to be able to do much with indirect fire while he's running. So, bearing in mind you get the minus two penalty. It looks like he's kind of moving, he's, he's kind of moving in this direction now. He's moving that, he's moving that uh, Kintaro. Again, nice move by him. He saw this. He saw this kind of coming. So he's mo he's moving back into a position. Now, yeah, technically it looks like my dragon's isolated, but I can quickly run down this side and reposition too. Uh, the other thing is, I am now closer to taking the hill than he is, and I I'm hoping that that will play on him psychologically a little bit because I could. I mean, he's close. I mean, look, his his position is roughly analogous to where mine is. I'd say he's kind of like mirroring me a little bit, and it's kind of interesting. Punchback is not in range of anything. Um, now, what can the Atlas... Uh, the Atlas can't see anything other than the trebuchet. Um, he can hit the trebuchet from there, but it's going to be 11s. Let's get the Hunchback. We'll just spot. I'm going to turn. Spot. Indirect fire. There are some nice pilot abilities that, uh, that kind of increase your spotting ability. And if I remember right, I think there's uh, one of the infantry, one of the quirks that you can get for soldiers, for the infantrymen, is that you can make them better at uh, directing indirect fire as well. The combined arms stuff really changes Battletech in a big way, and I really like it. Uh, Coffee and I have just been playing, you know, kind of like classic Battletech, I'd say. This is a big map, though, uh, for a Battletech map. This is like a really big map. But we like the big maps because we like to be able to, we like the dance, and we like to be able to kind of, you know, play with the long-range stuff as we get in. Eventually, you do have to close. Okay, we're not going to be able to shoot anything here, I don't think. Um, do I want to fire LRMs here? Got I've got 10 shots left. Evans is kind of bad. Um, if I can... Let's just have a look at the... Indirect. Okay, it's going to be 14 to hit him, so that's no good. Um, just so you can see, the spot around, so that increases the um, hit penalty, and as does the indirect fire. So your spotter really wants to be, you know, really you want infantry to be spotting. In all honesty, indirect fire is kind of a little bit more, a uh, little bit difficult to do. Um, I think I'm going to pass on that. I think I'm going to pass. I'm not going to waste ammo. Let's just keep him. I do. I, I feel that this game, with the way that it's going at the moment, it, we might want to, you know, get better hit penalty, hit modifiers. I'd rather wait a couple of turns and kind of get in. I, this, this, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I mean, if he gets a lucky shot and kills my dragon here, then you know, then I'm going to have to get in and start doing some damage. I think it, that will be time when we just got to go. Okay, Atlas, pick a target, try and kill it. But for the time being, while I've got the dragon distracting him like this, we uh, we have got the opportunity to be able to kind of cause some chaos. Pick, you know, maybe pick a target. Yeah, look, the Jenna's completely. Uh, it's not going to be able to shoot either. Thirteens to hit. It's no good. <laughs> Enjoy the dance. Okay, let's see what happens. So, uh, Dragon shot at the trebuchet. We hit with six of the LRM missiles. Uh, LRM 10 pack hit with six missiles, and we stripped some armor off its left arm and the left leg. Uh, trebuchet missed. Kintaro actually hit with the uh, L the LRM 5 at the on the Jenna. Um, he he actually he actually he needed a 12 and he hit. Uh, three missiles hit, but all of them were behind cover. This is like this is why I keep behind cover. Look, like three three LRM missiles would have been three damage, and that would have hit its left leg right and that could have been nasty however 
being behind cover really really helped there okay coffee saying something is going to go real bad real soon ha yeah i think he's right <laughs> Folks, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the episode here because I don't want to make a two-hour episode. So um, I'm going to end the episode. I'm just going to have a quick chat with my opponent and then I will see you in episode two. So I'll catch you next time. Take it easy.